Good evening, good afternoon, I guess it is. It's kind of late afternoon. But, you know, I'm here to speak about the Word of God. That's Victory Road Ministries. And, of course, my buddy back there at the camera, Forever in Your Hands Ministries. God's working in our lives. It's awesome. But it's really important to understand that this time and this season we're going through, according to the world, fear and panic is running rapid. I, myself... I'm tuned into the Lord. I have brothers in Christ that are tuned into the Lord. And we don't fear any one thing. There has to be a place where we can go to find comfort. And the only place you're going to find the comfort in a fearful time is of the Lord. God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross to fill all the provisions that you have need for. So this, this coronavirus that's going around and, you know, People are in fear. They're panicking. They're doing things that just aren't according to what God's will is for our life to act out in the way that we ought to when times of trouble come. And Christians, you know, that's where I really have a heavy heart. My heart's heavy for Christians and believers that just, you know, for whatever reason it is, don't come into the full knowledge of Christ and what all he's done for. It's amazing for me to see how you fall apart at the hinges when you should be strengthened and strengthen yourself in the Lord to make it through the times and troubles. A lot of preachers I know are talking about Psalms 91. It's one of the first places we go to when we see this coming about in the world, these plagues and pestilence. And I said before in one of my other uh, speakings that you know, we keep thinking, oh, it'll get better before it gets worse, brothers and sisters. It's not going to get better before it gets worse. We have to strengthen ourselves in the Lord, understand that we are the power on this earth to, to subdue the enemy's work. And, you know, it's just like anything else you work for, you know. You work at your job, you do well at your job, you expect to pay. You know, when you go to God, you go to God's words, and you look at the provision of Jesus Christ, you have to have a, an expectancy for the word to be fulfilled for what it says in your life. But we have to act according to the word also. So, you know, I don't want, I don't want to get into a whole big rant about the, the plague situation and all of those things because, you know, it's just something that the Bible says is going to happen. And, you know, here it is happening in our local area. Prepare yourself. Get prepared. Be prepared. You should be prepared before those things even come about. So when they shut you down from everything that you have at your fingertips, so to speak, is taken away from you, make sure that you're all right. Do the things and prepare ahead of time. Knowing the signs of the times and hearing the things that are going on ought to wake us up to understand that, you know, life isn't just, you know, a bowl of cherries all the time. Being a Christian is not a bowl of cherries. It, it, it's work. There's a work involved. And the work involved in that is to be... A brother in Christ, look to Jesus for all that God has provided through him for us and share it with brothers in times of need. If you're in a place right now where you're in panic mode and you're in fear and you're a Christian, you ought to understand that that's not a godly way to act in a time like this when others who need to see you as a brother in Christ that are scared and fleeing because they don't have Christ in them, they're not born again, this is the perfect opportunity for people to stand up and draw people into salvation. It's just one of the things that's coming. It's going to ramp up and get worse as we go along. And I'm telling you, I don't think that we need to stand by with our mouths closed and just let everything come at us as it, as it may. We have to be resistant. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. This plague isn't coming near my dwelling. So I'm going to get into Psalms 91 now. I'm going to read from the book of Psalms. And it's, it's, it's really powerful to look at the words that are used and understand what the word meanings are. And even just plainly read, you can see that there is a place where we can go to seek refuge. And that's what we need to do in a time like this. We need to seek refuge. They want to take you out of your church. They want to shut everything down. And, you know, the thing about it is it's not even as bad as some of the other things that were going on in the past. The swine flu, you know, it killed more people in a short time than this plague's even, even, you know, 
record it. So why is it worse for this one and not for the one that was before? There's more going on in the world and the government and the other areas that, that you know, that we're not aware of, but we need to be made aware. I'm going to start reading Psalms 91 now because my, my heart's troubled for people. It really is. But I have a peace in the Lord. It gives me provision where I need it. And I still don't lack any one thing. I'm not going to go run into the store panicking over toilet paper. Excuse me for saying that, but it's just it's ridiculous, I think, how we operate as Christians. We should be out there, you know, doing what we're allowed to do. Don't go outside the confounds of the law. That's not what I'm saying. Whatever they require, they require. But we don't have to subject ourselves to the things of this world. So in Psalms 91, I'm just going to read through the psalm and just give you, a, you know, hopefully an encouraging word that'll, that'll boost you up and bring you out of a place where the, the world just wants to Hover over you in darkness, you know. The evil ones have to seek, kill, and destroy. And so this is very important to understand. It's, it's important to understand where God is in this and a place where you can seek refuge. So in Psalms 91, I'm just going to start reading through it and go from wherever it leads. Psalms 91, in the beginning, says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. I say of the Lord, he's my refuge and he is my fortress. He is the place where I go to find comfort. He is the place to go where I have needs met. In any place, any time, for anything that's going on in this world, God is your fortress. He is the place where you can hide. Not hide, but hide from the devil's antics and his snares that he tries to set up to bring you down in faith to bring you down in spirit, to steal your peace, and to steal your joy. All these things add up to what? Nothing when you take them away. There's nothing you can do to make this way without God in your life through His Son, Jesus. So I will say of the Lord, He's my refuge, He's my fortress, my God in Him I will trust. I don't put my trust in men. I don't look to men because men will disappoint you. God never disappoints. He's always there. The timing for you might not be exactly what he does for you, but let patience have its perfect work through your faith. Faith produces this patience that you need to have for God to work. And it says, Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowl and from the, the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Shield explains itself. Shield is something that's in front of you, protecting you. You know, your, your breastplate of righteousness is like a shield. Buckler, in the, in the dictionary where it, it says, it's your defender as a way of shielding you. So God is both. He's your shield and your buckler, your defender. He defends you against these things. And you shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the air that flies by the day, nor of the pestilence that walk in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste on noonday. You can't look at all these things and act as if nothing's going on because it's a part of what we do in understanding God's provision in our life that is awesome. We can't just go around walking in fear and trembling when something comes about this world that is not of God. And it's just awesome to know that you have a God that you can take refuge in, and your strength shall be in this. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand may fall at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. You Christians and believers that are out there fearing what's going on in this world right now, it's not a good balance for your walk in the Lord. He is your refuge and strength. Seek Him in times of trouble. Seek Him in times when you have need. And this is a place where we have need. We have need to understand that God is your refuge. Take strength in Him. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. 
See, Christians and brothers in Christ right now ought to be looking at this. It's not an affliction that God's causing for you to be sick, but it's a reward of the wicked. The people that are unborn, the people that are unsaved, are being attacked by this plague, and other Christians and other people want to look and point fingers at God. God's not in, in this. He's, he's not the one that causes these things to show you, to teach you, to draw you back. It's a snare of the enemy that's working in this world that we live in, the God of this world. He's working in it to try to take out people, to build an army for himself, as it were. God's army is stronger than the enemy's army. Join up with the enemy, not. Join up with the Lord with all your heart with all your strength, with all your mind. Seek him as your refuge. Seek him as your strength. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge. Even the most high, your dwelling place. When you make him your refuge, and you make him your dwelling place, the Bible says in 91.10, No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. That says it for me. The truth in God's word is this plague is not going to come at me. I'm walking in right standing with the Lord God Almighty. I believe in his provision of protection. I take refuge under his wings. And I stand in the place where I need to be for people who are suffering and weak in spirit. We've got to give them strength. And you get your strength from the Lord through his word. Let him reveal to you the things that need to be done in your life to make change. And the first thing you do... To make changes, to give the Lord your life. If you've not already, you can see the times are coming and the pestilence and these things that are going on are biblical signs of the end times. And they've been going on since way back. It's nothing new under the sun. There's been plagues and pestilence for years and decades and so on, even before we were born. But now we're seeing them before us. We're seeing the things that go on that are before us that aren't of God. And we just fall away, shrinking back, fear and trembling. None of that should be a part of what we're doing when we're walking in the Lord in a time like this. We need to be strong, and we need to be abrasive against the enemy's works that are taking people out because we allow it. We cannot allow it. We have to take refuge. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. God's protection in this for us is ministering spirits of angels that surround you to give you the place of comfort to be able to, to, be able to you know, stand strong in a time where most people are falling apart and weak. I understand that there are things that we can't control. I understand that businesses are going to shut down and churches aren't going to assemble and things are happening that are just, you know, just aren't of God. It's not God's will for all this to come at us, to show us a way to turn back to Him. However, He allows things and it ought to be a wake-up call to the church. It ought to be a wake-up call to the Christians who do not believe in the power of God who do not believe in the giftings of the Spirit. These are the things that you need in your life now, being baptized in the power of the Holy Spirit, to come against the enemy's snares and the works of the fowler, so that we don't have to play, you know, sick. We don't, we, we, we don't have to just... Forgive me. We don't have to stand by and take it. we got to stand strong. We're the Lord's army. we got to stand strong. Can't be weakened and, and trembling and fearing all this thing. Take care of yourself. Do what you need to do to make provision for yourself. And start now, if you haven't yet, because it's not going to get better. Prepare yourself for what's to come. The Bible warned about it, and here we are. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the, lung, the young lion and and the serpent you shall trample underfoot, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He has called upon me, 
and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show my salvation to him. This is what we got to do. We have to really buckle down, tighten up a little bit on some things in our lives, and get straight with the Lord. Walk in right standing, not just come into Sunday and have your time in church and then not be a witness when you leave your church. We need to be testimony of God's work. We need to be life-changing for those who are suffering and weak in spirit. For those that are unborn, again, we need to be out there ministering and bringing them into the sheepfold. And this time and era right now, as we stand here, it's a great time to witness and minister the Word of God to people who are unsaved. It's our job as Christians to go out and preach the gospel to every creature. I love it when the Bible says every creature because, you know, even Lyme disease for a while was a big thing. You know, I say when that tick comes at me, Lyme disease doesn't have a chance because God created that tick for his intended purpose. And it doesn't come on me because I say, in the name of Jesus, I send that tick out to do the work that God's created it to do and not come after me with Lyme disease. I reject it in the name of Jesus. I am sanctified by God himself, set apart, and that's what we are. We're set apart for his good work. So let's do his good work now while we have opportunity to bring people into the, to the sheepfold that are lost and trembling. Christians, I watch them. I hear them. They're taking the power of God's word right out of the equation by the things that they're saying. I look on YouTube. I see people that I know that are ministers. And the one that's worked with me to get me to the place where I'm at is saying, in Jesus' name, my immune system is strengthened. In Jesus' name, I will walk according to the word. He's not going to fear or fret. And others will say, other than that, words that just do not allow God's work done in their life. They pick words and say things that are counterintuitive, and it's not working for them. It's not working for anybody. We have to believe in the gifting of the Spirit, the power of God that's in us, and release it and use it as a, as a mighty weapon against the enemy. No weapon formed against me shall ever prosper in Jesus' mighty name. I won't allow some pestilence or plague to come into my physical body when the Bible says a thousand will fall at your hand and ten thousand will fall at your right hand and not come before you. Do you believe it? Do you trust in the Lord to protect you? If you're running in fear for toilet paper, the least you can do is run in fear for the Lord. What are you going to buy if he comes back tomorrow? God loves you. He sent his son, Jesus, to die on the cross to protect you in a time like this. Get into place where you understand who you are in Christ and take a hold of the gospel for its truth and let the blood pouring out at the cross be your washing. I am covered in the blood. I am washed in the blood. I am baptized in the power of the Holy Spirit that God is loosed in this earth through his son Jesus when he died. We have to understand there's a strength that we need to stand on. We can't just cower away from everything that comes at us. We have to be the man of God that he set us up to be. And I'm not, I say it always because I'm not well rounded in all my ears. I'm a little rough around the edges. Some people don't even like that I stand here and preach the word of God in a camo t-shirt. But I'm not here for what I'm wearing. I'm here for what God's showing me to say to you. Pick up the cross. Carry it with you wherever you go. Keep your mind fixed on things above. Believe for God for all that he is. And not what he can do for you. But what he's already done for you. It's not what can he do. It's what he's already done. That's what's important to understand according to the cross. What he's already done is sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for you. To forgive you of your sins, to keep you from being sick, to make you whole, to give you peace, to give you joy, the peace that passes all understanding, provision in all the things that you need. 
I don't shake and waver around about what I believe. I stand firm on the word of God. I stand on my rock of salvation, and his name is Jesus Christ. He loves me. He loves you. He loves everybody that's in the creative world, and that's everybody. God loves you. He wants you to come. He wants to protect you. And I'm asking you, if you've not given your life to the Lord, will you consider it? Will you just consider that? Take it to your room, wherever you can go in a private place, and ask the Lord into your life. Say, Lord, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe, Lord, that you, you sent your son to die on the cross for me, to forgive me of my sin, to keep my body whole, to make provision for me where I have need. All these things are what we need to do. But ask him into your heart. Accept him into your life. Don't go walk in this world in the way of the world without the Lord on your side. You need him. You're going to need him. The further we get down the road in the end times, the way things are going, you're going to need him. And he wants you. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to share his goodness that he sent Jesus to bear for you on the cross. All that is in him is all yours. Perfection. We're not perfect, but he is. See, I have perfection living on the inside of me. Though my outside may not be perfect, I might not do everything the way you think I ought. I might not say the things the way that a well-educated man might with plaques all over the wall. But I know God, and I've seen his mighty work. I've seen the hand of miracles. I've seen him do things that just, you know, are unexplainable. But God. But God. And he loves us. And when we get into this place where the enemy is wreaking havoc, you got to stand strong, believe in, believe in the word for the word's sake, and trust in him, and have a great expectation of Jesus Christ and what he's came to do for you. Expect it. You have a right to expect what the word says. That's why when I read the book and it says, No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. I believe that. And no plague is going to come near my dwelling. As long as I'm in right standing and walking with the Lord in, in spirit and truth. We worship him in spirit and truth. And the truth of God's word is solid truth. There's nothing in here that's fairy tale. I don't know how someone can even say that, but I hear it a lot. And it, it blows me away. But that just gives me an opportunity to minister to them certain things about God's word. And it's important to know that. Plagues and pestilence. Surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. And the fowler is the enemy. He's out to take you out. He doesn't want to make life easy for you. And there is no life that's easy for you. You've got to find your life in Christ Jesus, understand the provision of the cross, and believe in the thing to be not as though it were. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to stand strong in a time like this as Christians and not run in fear and trembling and stand in front of the enemy and put him in his place. He had the power living on the inside of you. It's up to you to take your authority, release it, and allow God's work to be done. We can't let the enemy just walk around and stomp and storm like there's nobody here to put him in his place. Stand on your, your own two feet. Stand on the rock of your salvation and believe for God to move in your life through his son Jesus. You see, all these things in the Bible have a great expectation of God to do what he said in Jesus. Don't limit yourself with your small thinking. Don't think, well, it's just meant to be. I guarantee you there are people that think that this is of God. It's not. It's not of God. God will allow it to be awakening, but it's not of him. Not when the word reads this. It says, where was I at when I saw it? A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes 
Shall you look and see the reward of the wicked? This is the reward of the wicked. In other words, if we were wicked people and not having Jesus in our life, not born again, atheists have been belief, and all these things, it's an attack of the enemy to build an army for him. And so he's working 24-7, but God's work is greater in that 24-7 time frame that we live in. I love the Lord. I believe in all that his provisions provide. I am, you know, I'm, I'm a different man. I'm not that same person I used to be. Those of you that know me, and I know a lot of you know me around here, it's not going to keep me hush-hush just because you know me or you think I'm nuts because I'm saying something that you might not like to hear. The truth of God's word is, he is our fortress. He is our refuge. In him you find your strength. In Christ all things are possible. All things are possible. Not just some things, all things. So when this plague comes knocking on your door, what are you going to do? Run in fear? Fear not, for I am with you. The Lord God loves you, and he needs you to be a witness for him. We can't just keep standing around with our hands in our pockets, waiting to say, well, if it's God's will, I'll go preach. Well, if it's God's will... You know, my number's up. God doesn't have a number on your life. He doesn't have a number on your life. You should have life expectancy according to the Bible. It's 120 years. Now, it's diminished over the years and over the decades. Started out in 8 and 9, 100, down to 5, 4, 3, 2. We're less than 100 now. Our life expectancy according to the world is 75 years old. But the Bible says it's 120. You know, if we live a life into the 80s, Thank the Lord for it. If somewhere along the line, you might have honored your parents to have long life on this earth. First commandment with a promise. Honor your mother and father. You know, Get a long life on this earth so you can speak to people about God. Talk to them about the things they need to hear that are edifying, encouraging, and strengthening. You know, We don't want to use things like this to scare people into salvation. That's not what it is. We're just giving you a heads up that you're better off being born again and of Christ and of the enemy where he can come in and influence you into keeping you in a lifestyle that's not, not working for you. Sooner or later, those season times end because they never, they never last. The enemy's works don't last. You'll get a season time. It might be for half a lifetime. And then all of a sudden, the bottom falls out. Right now, the way of the world, the way people are going, the bottom's starting to fall out. It's not going to change. It's not going to get better before it gets worse. I'm just asking you today, if you're not of the Lord, if you've never given your life to the Lord, take five minutes and go to a private place and ask Him into your heart. Ask Him to be your Lord and Savior. Protect yourself from the things of this world. The God of this world is going to continue on inflicting and inflicting and causing people to be weakened by their thoughts that God is not in this. He's in it to save you. He's in it to protect you. He's done all he can. You have to understand the word and the authority that you have to take God's word and apply it to your life to help you see your way through. He's the light in your feet and the lamp in your path. Don't fall short by just not being born again. You know? I don't like to see it. I don't like to see people hurt. I don't like, I struggle a lot of times with things. I'm struggling with things now, but you know what? I'm not going to let it steal my joy. I'm not going to let the enemy come into my thoughts and take me out of a place where I need to be, especially in a time like now, to meditate on God's word and to seek his provisions in it for my life. And that's the benefit we have. It's a benefit to understand that God's word is true and that it will have an effect on your life if you... Get in his word and try to, try to have a relationship with him. Just talk to him. Keep your mind fixed on things above so the things of this world can't get in and entertain thoughts that aren't of God. And we can't, we can't keep going down that road. We have to stand up strong. Time to buckle up, you know, put your big boy pants on, I guess, if you will, and stand strong in the Lord, you know. You trust him for forgiveness of sin. There's not one person I know that's born again that 
that doesn't believe that God has forgiven them of their sin. So why is it that we fall short on other areas that God's provided and just think, well, maybe, or maybe not? You know, God is true to his word. He's a God that won't lie. He can't lie. And he won't. When he gave us authority through Jesus Christ, that's what he did when he left the comfort of the Holy Spirit that dwells inside you. Be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Take on the provision that God gives you in that and release it for yourself and for others. But mostly by words. Watch the words you speak. Life and death are in the power of the tongue and out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. So let's speak of good things. Let's understand the fortress that we have here in God. Let's understand that he's our covering. He's our protector. You know? It's just awesome to know that we have that place we can go in a time like this. You know? I don't need a whole lot to manage myself in this world. I'm not a, I'm not a man of the world. I'm a, I'm a man that's in it, but not of it. I, I, you know, the provision I need is the truth of God's word working in my life to protect me. You know, I'm not going to let a disease take me out. Y'all shouldn't either. Get a hold of the word and understand that he's, he's king above kings and lord above lords, man. And, you know, there's no other place you can go on this earth or to anybody that lives on this earth that's going to do for you what God can do. Get a little long-winded, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna stand here and keep going over it and over it. I just want you to understand that God's word is true. Don't fall prey to the enemy's tactics in a time like this. Don't go into panic mode. If you're gonna go into panic mode and you're not born again, get into panic mode and run to the cross. It's the only place you're gonna find what you need. You know, go to the cross. It's good to give thanks, and this is just on into Psalms 92. It's good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to his name, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. See, this is telling you the truth of God's word. He's faithful. He's true. His loving kindness is there for you in the morning. His mercies are new each and every morning. So I'm going to try to encourage you today to wake up tomorrow. If you don't, on a regular basis, take yourself out of your routine. Give God five minutes of your time in the morning. Believe for him to work in your life. I believe for him to protect you. In Jesus' name, this plague shall not come near your dwelling. That's what the word says. That's not what I'm saying. But the truth of God's word is your protector. Take a hold of God's word. Believe in the things that he has for us. And just love the Lord. Give him all you have. In a time like this, when people are weak, be strong for those that are weak, especially Christians and preachers. Be strong for those that are weak. Don't cower back and run and hide. It's not a time for that. It's time for us to step out and show faith to believe that God is with us. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. Thank you so much. I love you all. I appreciate, you know, prayers. I know some of you are praying for me, and I love that. It's awesome. And so, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Father, for the work that you do here. I thank you, Father, for protecting the children of God. Lord, give them the strength that they need to go out into this world and minister to those that are lost. Bring them in. Help them, Lord, to, you know, subdue fear. Give them a peace that passes all understanding and the strength to endure all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you. God loves you. I love you. And, you know... Keep pressing in for the mark of the prize. You know, we're not there, but we left. So let's leave that old place and go on to a new place and love the Lord in it. Thank you.